All right, turn with me to Exodus chapter 12 and verse 1. We're going to go over some of the particulars of the Passover. Um, and there are, again, certain things in here that are good to keep in mind because you'll see them again. Uh, and if you can start, you know, right now it's just, well, I'm giving you pieces. If you can start getting the pieces together, they'll come together really quick as we get past this, this little part here. Um, so Exodus <clears throat> chapter 12, verse 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. And it shall be the first month of the year to you. Okay, so here he's talking about the Passover. He's talking about their, uh, he's talking about the Exodus. <clears throat> and he's saying, I'm changing your calendar right now. I'm changing the way you view what's the beginning and what's the end. I'm changing everything. So get with me. That's kind of basically what he's saying, okay? Um, Speak ye unto the congregation of Israel, saying, in the, in the tenth day of this month they shall take to them every man a lamb. All right, so he's saying this, this is the beginning. Everybody take a lamb. <laughs> this is the beginning of months. This begins your year. This begins everything. And it will be how you begin every time, okay? Take to them every man a lamb, according to his house of their fathers, a lamb for a house. And if the household be too little for the lamb, let him and his neighbor next unto his house take it according to the number of souls, every man according to his eating. Good. So, so according to his eating, this is how you, in other words, the lamb in itself that you take, which hasn't been, which hasn't been talked about putting it to death yet, the lamb that you take to your house, it has to be according to your eating. And let me tell you, how much you have of the lamb in you is according to your eating. Can I get amen? And if you're not if you're not in the word, if you're not seeking the Lord out in this way, you know, we once we were talking about soaking a lot and everything. If you know, if you're not soaking, you're not gonna be ready. And if you're not eating the lamb, everything that comes after this, because this is the beginning. He said this is the beginning. And if you're not eating, uh, and and if you're according to your eating, it is not much. then there's going to be very little lamb that comes out of you. Very little attitudes of the lamb. Very little laying down your life. Very little of the cross at work. Because, you know, remember what I said? Some people have a mutton-free diet. Uh, every man according to his eating, this is uh, still verse uh, 4. <clears throat> every man according to his eating shall make your count for the lamb. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male of the first year. So what is that saying? Well, we're blemished, right? The prodigal son was blemished. You're going to have to have another lamb besides you. And the goal is not to clean up your lamb, you. The, you know, everybody, all Christians are working on trying to clean themselves up. He didn't say, make sure the person who offers the lamb is without blemish. Well, that's good news. Y'all should be happy to hear that one. He, he didn't say you have to be without blemish. He said pick the one, the lamb that is, and let him be in you. That's important. That's important. That's important for a bunch of reasons. I mean, my God, we see the blemishes in everybody, don't we? I mean, we do. We see the faults and the blemishes in everybody, of course, except us. Because we're perfect. And that's why we can see their blemishes, because 
we live such a perfect life. <laughs> all right, so your lamb will be without blemish, a male of the first year. All right, so there it is, a male of the first year. You shall take it out from the sheep and from the goats, and you shall keep it up until the 14th day of the same month, and the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. So you do realize that this is the forming of Israel. This is, when they come out, they went in as just a big family. When they come out, they're going to be a nation. Okay. And so he's saying, um, I want the lamb to have been around before you were. They're about to be a nation. Choose a lamb of the first year. Well, for that means the lamb was slain before the foundation of the world, before we ever existed. It was there. So, um, and keep it until, let's see, uh, the whole assembly and the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. Okay. Okay, you can say it's emphasizing in the evening, but they're all killing it at the same time. They're all in agreement with the death of the Lamb. And they're all in agreement with the Lord's timing and the Lord's, if you will, cross so that we all look to the same time and the same place he was before us. So, uh, verse 7, And they shall take of the blood and strike it on the two side uh, posts and on the upper door posts of the houses wherein they shall eat it. Okay, so it could have very easily said, like what we say and what you hear everyone say, uh, they put the blood on the doorpost. Or they, even if they said they, they struck it and put it on this side and on that side, like what it just said. But no one centers in on the doorpost of what? And it says... The, uh, strike it, uh, verse 7, and they shall take of the blood and strike it on the two sides of the post and on the upper doorposts of the houses wherein they shall lead it. They're not just putting blood up there. They're, everybody's always emphasizing the blood. They're, they're putting the blood of the one they're going to eat. It didn't even say they put the blood of the one you killed or put the one of the slain lamb. It says put the the blood of the one that you are going to turn around and put that sacrifice on the inside of you. Okay, that's, that's a great revelation of that story, but this is supposed to be our story. In fact, they were a shadow. We're supposed to be the real. Okay, so we go, well, the blood covers me. Praise God. You know, the blood, you know, that's like, that's like communion, saying, oh, praise God, the blood. Why didn't Jesus say, take the cup and pour it over your head? <laughs> no, seriously, come on. Because that's the way we view it. We go, oh, this blood is for you. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> oh, God. Now I'm going to embarrass myself. <laughs> this blood's for you. That's a, it's a beer commercial. Sorry. Uh, uh, <laughs> Hi, Mike. Hey, you missed it. It was really good. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, I think uh, her saying Mike just came on reminded you, but okay, we only have a little so much time here, so we need to really see this. Um, so it's important that we see the blood as the blood of the one we're going to eat or the one we're going to put on the inside of us, all right? And by eating is not just, you know, you could swallow a penny and put it on the inside of you, right? But it's not going to become part of you. The, the lamb is supposed to be assimilated into our being it's supposed to give the strength of the lamb, the, the nature of the lamb. All right, so, <clears throat> um, verse 8, and they shall eat. I don't know if you're noticing how many times it says eat. Yes, it is a lot. Uh, verse 8, and they shall eat the flesh 
in that night roast with fire and unleavened bread and with bitter herbs they shall eat it again eat not verse 9 eat not of it see eat 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 raw nor sodden at all don't don't eat don't water down the lamb okay um Uh, nor sodden at all with water, but roast with fire, his head with his legs, and with the put uh, putrants thereof. And ye shall let nothing of it remain until the morning, and that which remaineth of it until the morning ye shall burn with fire. Because the lamb was meant to be in you. It wasn't meant, we're not supposed to have leftovers. <laughs> you know. <laughs> He's not meant to be leftovers. This is not good. <laughs> um, verse 11, and thus shall you eat it again, eat, with your loins girded. Your, so he didn't say, now make sure that you're ready when we get ready to leave. He said, when you eat it, eat it this way. Be ready to move by the life of the lamb. You know? Don't sit around and go, well, you know, maybe I should try this hat. Or, no, that doesn't look good. You know, he's in, you know, you're not going out in the life of the lamb. You're messing around with your life. Um, verse 11 again, and thus shall you eat it with your loins girded and your shoes on your feet and your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it again in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. It's not yours. So everything is, this is all about what the Lord desires and, the, you know, the, the realities of the Lamb in relationship to our life. <clears throat> Verse 12, for I will pass through the land of Egypt this night and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt. Now, so here it comes. So I will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and against all the gods of Egypt I will execute judgment. I am the Lord, and the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you, and the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. So I was wondering, I've always, every, everything that's ever been portrayed to me was, they put the blood on the doorpost and the death angel came over and saw the blood and went, no, nah, I ain't gonna do that, you know. You know he's gonna pass on over, it's the Passover, okay. But it's not just the blood on the doorpost. He sees the blood on the doorpost and it's a token of you ate the lamb. Because he said, put the door, blood on the doorpost of the house wherein you eat of the lamb. So it has a whole new meaning. It's, yeah. it's God not just saying, blood is magical. Blood scares me. I will pass over. You know, or blood is, you know, it's powerful. You know, or I plead the blood. You know. <laughs> All this stuff, you know, that we do that, that really doesn't even have scriptural foundation. But rather, this is the people who put my lamb in them, and this is a token of that. Come, you look, you check it out. You know, I've never heard anybody say it. Maybe it's not so. Just because I said it doesn't make it so. But you check it out and look a little closer than maybe before and see if maybe that token really is that. All right, so um, uh, and when I see the blood, I will pass over you, and the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. And this day shall be unto you for a memorial. Does that ring anything to anybody? These memorials are big deals because they're big deals to God and he wants them to be a big deal to us and you shall keep it what a feast you shall keep it a feast okay so this is the exact kind of thing that we're saying the prodigal son the father took him over he showed him the sacrifice they ate it remember that they ate it 
And then they rejoiced, and it was a feast. A feast to the Lord. This is the Lord's Passover. It's a feast to him. This is what he feasts on. Throughout your generation, so he's, this is not a one-time thing. You shall keep it a feast by an ordinance forever. All right. So he's calling his firstborn out, right? He's calling his son. He's calling his firstborn out. Is, is he the firstborn son, Jesus? Is he Israel? Um, well, let me just ask this then. Is he invisible? Like with the prodigal son, we kind of said there's the, two el there's the elder son and the prodigal, but you couldn't see the son that was in him. Is he invisible? Okay. Um, is he inside of Israel? Is the firstborn, is Jesus the lamb on the inside of Israel? They, I mean, they say, somebody would say, uh, they didn't have Jesus in them. Yes, they did. They ate the lamb. They ate the lamb, and he was on the inside of them, and the father is calling his son out. And he's not talking about throw up. He's talking about let my son bring you out of your bondage. Let my firstborn, let my lamb bring you. Let him be the strength of your, of your coming out. Let him be the exodus for you. So, um, I wrote, the final end of Passover is eat the lamb. The end of sacrifice is that it is not just for us as a benefit. Kill this lamb, put its blood, don't eat it, just kill it, put its blood up there, and you won't die. That sounds Christian. <laughs> you know, just believe Jesus died and believe in the blood and... That's all you got to do. I'm sorry, I get a little carried away. But, you know, I mean, I hear so much stuff and I look at the scriptures and I go, wait a minute. Um, so the end of the sacrifice is not that it's just for us as a benefit, but meant to be in us. Israel called it the feast of Passover. You know, not the event or not the deliverance of Passover. I want to tell you the story of the deliverance of Passover. No, it's not words. It's a feast. What do you tell your son when they ask, why do we do this? And there's a, a reality that we are still reenacting today. Shut up, kid. Eat the lamb. No, I don't would never say that. He's a godly Jew. But, you know, this is, this is where he's going to go with it because it's a feast. It's a feast. And I put, uh, Israel called it the feast of Passover, not the story or the sermon on it. All right. So the scripture says, at midnight, the Lord smote all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, from the firstborn of Pharaoh who sat on his throne to the firstborn of the captive who was in the dungeon and all the firstborn of the cattle. That's Exodus 12, 29. So there are, there are questions. There are many questions that that just this much should cause us to ask. There are statements made that need to be looked at to find out what is the real deal because we've all been told a story and we've never looked at it close enough in the scriptures to say, okay, so why was all the firstborn, including God's firstborn, going to die? But they ate the lamb. Because you have to remember, they ate God's firstborn. Because the lamb also was a firstborn. 
the firstling of the flock. And so there is, you know, so what saved them? And then it says something about Pharaoh, and it says, well, Pharaoh, uh, Pharaoh wouldn't let my people go, so I killed all the firstborn. Okay, so if Israel didn't put the blood on the doorpost, would they have died too? Answer is yes. So the blood saved them, or the the lamb that they ate. But anybody's kind of see there are there are so many little questions. There are so many little questions that are in here that I have thoroughly enjoyed uh, getting into. And so hopefully next time. We'll start, because there's a little list, not just of the questions, but there's a little list I have of main points uh, that, that are orderly in the way God has expressed that in the scriptures so that we can lay hold of that. And again, we're making a template so that almost any story, I mean, it's just gotten that much now. You lay that over it and you go, oh my God, look, there it is. Look, there, how can this be? How can this be? because God wants his son out of us, because God is not trying to make us a special son, sorry, Amen. that he's got a special son, <laughs> you know, and they put him in us, Amen. and he wants that son to be given unto him through us. Amen. Father, we just ask you to continue, continue, continue to open our hearts and our eyes and our, our let us ask questions, Lord. Let us not just read and, and just accept without even thinking through what's being said, Lord. And in, in doing that, in searching the scriptures, in asking questions, may you begin to draw the veil back and we see the one behind the veil that nobody's seen, that nobody really knows, except the high priest, which is the son. And that we may not use the phrase, come boldly into the throne of grace, as some excuse for telling, and, and telling him all of our earthly problems but to actually come boldly in there to you, to know you there, to know you there. And in knowing you and in seeing you being changed to that same image and in eating that lamb being changed on the inside, we ask in Jesus' name, amen.